What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how to run a fade against zone coverage or off-man coverage. So we're going to be talking about a move you guys can do with this vertical set to the inside, the mechanics behind the move, and when to use this move to create some separation. When you're in the off-man situation, maybe you got a good matchup against a DB and you know you could beat him. On a fade, we're going to talk about how you guys can use this in a game-time scenario, okay? And guys, if you're a receiver and you want to get faster, you want to be more explosive, you want to be faster in and out of your breaks, check out that link in the description that says Speed Workout Plan, full 28-day plan designed to make you faster all stuff that you could do pretty much at home or with your basic gym that you have hope to get you guys on that soon let's get started so first thing we got here is we're going to be looking at um our uk running this route now this is going to be more like a zone scenario. We don't have the full clip of the DB, but we're going to be talking about this move, what this move serves to do. And then on the next clip, we're going to be talking about the mechanics behind the move. Okay, so we're going to see how he's coming off here, closing the gap with the DB, getting him to lean inside with this vertical set, right? So this vertical set can build up off of a lot of things, and let's talk about it. So. We got a DB, we come up to the line, we're not always going to be getting a press situation. Press is ideal when you guys got to run a fade because I'm more confident in press that we could actually get behind this guy. And in this scenario, we got to really make sure that I close the gap, get him on his heels, and get him to bite to the inside. So my pad level is important and my speed is important, right? Yesterday we talked about the three phases of the route. Here we're going to be talking about this, this is phase one, right? The stem. We got to talk about the stem and being able to be full speed into this break, selling like I'm just running straight at this guy, going to put the move on and go. And now we're going to be selling like I'm running a post, right? So you see how he's coming inside here and he's working this bam, move to the inside. They call this a vertical set, right? So you want to see how he turns his hips and he commits his shoulders because what's a DB going to be looking at? He's going to be looking at, and you can kind of see it here with his eyes, he's going to be looking at those hips. That's what he's taught to do. That's what a disciplined DB is taught to look at. He's not looking at your eyes, not looking at your feet. So it's important that we don't think I have to reach on this kind of a move, right? In the next clip we're going to look at, we're going to look at a little bit longer of a move, but we're going to talk about how you could still stay explosive. But in this one, you see, not a reach. Doesn't need to reach with this move. It's just a quick, sudden move. His upper half is what's got to turn, right, guys? Anytime you make, like, you work a vertical set, um, that maybe you got to run a corner and you're selling like you're going one, two to the inside and you got to cut back outside, or you're running a post and you go vertical set, break back on the outside on a rocker step, or when you're just taking a regular vertical set like this, your upper half has got to be loose. If you could have a loose upper half, your upper half can be nice and loose to where you could throw it freely and really sell this move with your upper half, you're more likely to get this DB to bite, right? And so what do we start to do here? We got this DB to stop his feet. We got all of his weight to be on this outside leg, and that's a recipe for separation if we can explode off of this break, and we're going to talk about that in the next clip. But that's what we want to be able to do. We want to really be able to throw, and then I accelerate out. I get those hands off of me. I keep my head down, and I continue to drive out of this thing to create some space. That's a great job here by UK. Let's watch this thing full speed again one more time. This is a great route, pushing up vertical, throwing to the inside. Let's watch it again. So pushing up, jab to the inside, get his feet to stop, and then we accelerate back out. So now this next clip we're going to be looking at here, we're going to break down the mechanics of the movement. And now this is more of an off-man scenario where maybe you got to attack leverage. And we're going to be talking about attacking leverage a little bit. So you see how we line up here, DB's inside leverage, right? Inside leverage, what's he going to be watching? He's going to be watching my hips, he's going to be watching my number. Now, off the line of scrimmage, if i got a DB who's inside leverage and I'm trying to run a fade, I'm not just going to go just run this fade because the DB's going to be all over it. That's a mistake you see a lot of young receivers make. And I hope you've been watching these, if you've been watching these videos, you don't make that mistake because we covered this before. Now, when I come off here, I want to try to work to attack his midline right? Or inside shoulder, whichever it is, because that's going to force a reaction out of him. Now, DB's going to be like, well, if you come off and you attack my leverage, I'm just going to keep my leverage. Fine. Do that. I want you to do that. I want you to keep this inside leverage here because I want to create more space to the sideline. That's why I want to be able to do that. If I get you to be off this platform here, I can shoot back outside because I'm confident I can make you jump on this move because you're going to be over anxious to break on this thing because you're an off man. You know that you're at a disadvantage. You want to prevent the deep ball, right? So I got to make sure that I really sell this with my up Half. So let's watch, do, uh, let's watch it full speed. I'm, I forget if we watched it full speed. But throwing this thing to the inside, accelerating back up and catching this ball over the top. Okay, so now let's break it down. So he comes off the line here and you see how his first step coming across. Let's talk about the mechanics of this. His back leg coming across is at this 45 because that's what's going to square him up. Then his second step is able to push vertical and he doesn't lose any depth on this route. What a lot of people do is when they attack leverage, their first step will go here and their second step will be flat and then they lose depth and they lose timing. We still got to be able to keep the same depth. So that back leg's got to be at a 45. That second leg's got to get you vertical. So 45 vertical and we're attacking the leverage. Now, doing what a disciplined DB would do, right? Keep 
in his leverage to the inside. I'm not going to let him get all up in my inside in the inside leverage. I'm not going to let him attack me and get me on my heels, right? So that's a, that's a good job by the DB, quote unquote, good job. So we attack him right here, and you see how he's squaring him up, closing the gap, and he makes his head fake to the inside, right? He gives this violent one. He gives this one, two, vertical set to the inside. Look at how loose his upper half is, right? We've talked about this many times before. Where's the DB looking? Upper half. He's going to try to break on this thing. He's going to stop his feet. If I could really make sure I throw to the inside. And now you see when he does this, though, he doesn't open up his toe and he doesn't open up his hips dramatically to where he can't drive out of it. He rel- keeps his toes relatively straightforward. The reason why he does that is so he could keep the weight on the inside part of his foot and he could push to give him some explosion out of there. If we could push off of any cut that's going to give us some explosion, you see how he doesn't drag this back foot right here. He does not drag this behind him. He pushes, he opens up, and he's running. Right, And if we could get this DB to be in this position, get him to stop his feet with that vertical set to the inside, head fake, so he fully commits his upper half. That's what we got to be able to do. They say the hips, so you look at the hips. The hips are going are to tell you the truth. Shoulders will lie, head will lie, eyes will lie. Yeah, that's 100% correct. But when you throw your hips to the inside, what are you going to do then? You throw your hips to the inside. He's watching your hips. That's going to get him to jump on this break. That's a great job by this receiver here. Now, let's talk about the mechanics of this one. We're here, and we get him to jump to the inside and stop his feet. We got to be able to make sure that I keep this separation. When you got a quarterback who doesn't quite understand the concept of air and just wants to hold this thing for forever and throw it on a line and wait till you're wide open, hard thing to do. But when you got a quarterback, especially at this this college film, especially at the collegiate level, they understand the fact that we got to anticipate, we got to throw it with air, we got to put it on a spot. Let's go, let him get it, especially an off man. So you guys got to explain to your quarterbacks, hey, if he's off and, and I make a move to the inside, just put it on a spot. Let me keep my head down. Let me focus on beating this guy. Keep my head down and run my arm to create some separation and be able to get upfield. And that's exactly what he does. You see how he does not look till he knows he's got him by about three steps. And then this ball's a great ball over the top. Laid hands on the catch. Great route here by this receiver. Great job using this vertical set. Selling like we're running a post. Now let's talk about this. Like let's say he had to run a post here. Now, let's say he comes back a second time, does the same exact thing. DB keeps his leverage. That's what he's taught to do. Now what he does here is he goes one. Throws to the inside. DB's seen this before. He's not going to bite crazy on this. And then we push off of this leg and we catch myself on this right leg and we throw a rocker step. We go left, right. And you throw your upper half just like you did. This DB is going to be trying to jump to the outside because he just got beat. And then bam. I attacked his leverage. He kept his leverage, did a good job, but I threw my upper half and I threw my shoulders on this rocker step and I make the move believable. That's what got him to turn his hips and that's what got him to bite on a rocker step if I wanted to use this on a post, right? There's so many different things you could do. And then let's say you got to run a corner off of it, right? So let's say you come back one time and instead of doing, let's say you ran the vertical set, let's say you ran the post and now let's say you got to run a corner. So let's say you go one, that's your first step. Then you go back out two, then you go back in three and you really get this DB to bite and then I accelerate back up to the corner. There's three different routes that you run just by setting up off of this one vertical set on this fade against off man. Let's watch it again full speed. So he's coming off here. Attack leverage. One hard step to the inside. Make sure I keep that head down and accelerate up to beat that DB. Great route. All right, guys. I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you guys have any questions, please leave those in the comments. And if you want to get faster, if you want a gym workout plan to be able to improve your speed, check out that link in the description that says speed workout plan. I'll see you guys next time.